Six months ago I started the series Life of Linux on the PlayStation 2. Now, during its development I can tell you there has been a few ups and downs which I will cover in another video. Initially this is not the follow-up video that I had intended or planned to do, but let's get into it. Last, last episode. episode! So, in the last episode we checked out the live DVD to use a performance benchmark. Unfortunately the loading times, lockups and errors did not make that a pleasant experience. So I'd like to do some performance differences and just see what we can do out of the box. Let's just start up with probably the heaviest application on the system here that's bound to put the PS2 through its paces, Firefox. I think I'll go back to the old net first up just for another quick hello. Oh, our first security warning. I'm expecting to see a few of these. Take it a while to load. There we go. Oh, and another. And another. It scrolls pretty smoothly. I think. While it's trying to load the OLED, I might open up the system monitor just to see how much load we have going on here. Just under half the RAM is in use and the CPU isn't doing too bad. I think if we try and open a few more applications to see whether or not the system can decently multitask given its specs, might give us a bit of a, um, a gauge of how much power we can actually get out of this MIPS CPU. Much faster loading times for sure. The live DVD couldn't even do Firefox, so that's quite a noticeable difference. Alright, I think we should watch some Star Wars. Oh, look at that. Star Wars and high definition text. I know the terminal shouldn't generate much of a load, but I'm curious to see how many things we can get running before we see a noticeable performance change. Oh yeah, look at that, we've jumped up to 13% on the CPU from 7% and jumped up to 15 megabytes opposed to the 13 in use before. Okay, so it didn't load the old net up because it was held up by security again. And everything seems to be running alright for now. And again. I wonder how many of these we're going to get before we get to the old net. Alright, so we're finally in. I think we should hit this uh, guestbook again, but let's have a quick look around uh, the site to see the performance of Firefox. Yeah, it's actually not too laggy, better than the DVD by miles. Scrolls pretty smoothly. A little bit laggy, but it's not terrible. Look at that, that's beautiful. Alright, so let's have a look at our monitor here. Oh, look at that, 83%. We've got 17 megabytes of memory in use there. And that's jumping between 50 to 80% CPU usage, which is quite a big jump from the 13% we had before in terms of load. The processing time for web pages is definitely faster. It still scrolls pretty smoothly considering the load it's under. So it still takes a little, little bit of time, but much faster than the DVD, which is to be expected, I know. It's been about five to six months since the uh, first video, so I'll leave a quick note here. Oh, look at that, bit of self-promotion. Now, we've still got the terminal running Star Wars as well, in the background. So, I wonder what part they're up to there. So, I'll submit this form here, and we'll go and check out Star Wars. And when we come back, we'll see if it has 
submitted it yet. Ah, did we miss the sand people? Pretty good work these guys did to uh, get that happening. Oh, look, interrupted by another security error. It took a bit of time to actually submit that. It's not too bad. Right. Uh, maybe we should fire up some BBS and another terminal while Star Wars is also running. We'll go to the old net. Here you can see it's still running pretty good. And it doesn't feel too laggy. I mean, I know I've only got uh, two terminals and Firefox running, but I think we can keep going and just ramp it up and see how far we can go before it fully jams up on us. And Star Wars is still running smoothly. And even switching between the virtual desktops and opening menus, it's, it's not too laggy, so pretty good. Let's go to the guest book and open up our last post that we did through Firefox and then next up I think I might load up Dillo and we will head to the old net from there also ha huh. and there it is through our Telnet client via the BBS Star Wars is still going, so let's open up Dillo and see what kind of load it puts on the system. Wow, that loaded really fast, like really fast. It is a pretty lightweight uh, universal open source sort of multi-platform browser Dillo. Nope, security errors. Now it was a bit strange here because I was unable to open these links. Now that must be related to those security errors, so it must be preventing us from opening them. So we'll have to just enter the address in manually. Someone wasn't paying attention. All right, let's try that again. Right, we're in. Very smooth scrolling. Look at that, no choppiness at all. Such a good lightweight browser without having to use all the resources of the system. There's our message from earlier. Let's check back. That's surprising. That is a little bit surprising, but I think it must idle down the other applications. Uh, I did want to try and play some YouTube, but I figured that this distribution is pretty old and that probably wouldn't work anyway. Next up was Pigeon, some instant messenger, some IRC chat channels, uh, still pretty active these days, so I figured we should try and meet some new friends on there and have a play around. There's a few people on here. I wonder what systems these guys are possibly connected to. I also built a uh, ESP8266 Wi-Fi module for my Commodore 64 and got it online with BBS on the old net, which I'll do a video on another time. And it even comes with transmission and I've got it running in the background there so perhaps we could host some files later on that I'm going to build with GCC or host some other torrents. That's going to do it for this video and in conclusion I can say it's actually quite a usable system which was really surprising. Uh, I don't know if you could use it as your daily driver but let me know your thoughts in the comments section. So it's still pretty usable the system, quite surprising. And I know it took ages to get this follow up video out 
um, and the content of this one isn't extremely exciting but this video was just to test out the power of this 294 MHz R5900 MIPS CPU. In the next few videos things will get interesting when we start compiling some small applications, maybe run a web host of some sort, possibly port some old DOS games that I've been working on, just to see what sort of uh, kind of challenges await us on this journey because we will also be doing some hardware hacks later on down the line and I can promise you that the third episode will not be uh, far behind this one, well, six months faster than last time anyway.